Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now if you've been watching my channel, the entire channel started with my SIG P365. This is the micro compact version, technically the Nitron compact. Very cool, this was my first firearm and what really for me got me started into firearms and actually started with this channel. But here, this SIG P365, well a little bit different. My original in 9mm, here this in 4.5mm or 0.177 BB, which I think is absolutely phenomenal because quite frankly, I just want more range time. My range is not far from me at all, but I can't always get there. With this, my range is here all the time. I can shoot outdoors, I could technically shoot in my garage or shoot in my basement. A little bit sketchy, but at the same time, I could definitely work it out, and I think I will. And so today's video, what we're going to do, we're going to get this out of the box. I'm going to show it to you in detail so you get an understanding of this. First, I'm going to show you the BB version of the 365. Then we're going to get outside. We're going to go through an entire cartridge, one full cartridge worth of shots, getting this out, putting it to use getting some impressions, and I'm gonna show you all of the shooting footage so that you can see it from beginning to end. There are a number of things to consider, such as, for example, A, the capacity of the magazine, B, the capabilities and capacity of the actual cartridge and how many rounds you get out of it, the little nuances, the mechanics, the maneuverability, the clearing and the jams, that all comes with the shooting footage. Then we're gonna get back, I'm gonna show it to you more specifically in combination with the 365 original, but with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. And so here you can see getting the SIG P365 air gun out of the box, taking a quick look at it here for the first time. So generally speaking, packaged up pretty straightforward. A lot of different information around the box, but again, very straightforward. It's not what's outside the box, it's what's inside the box here that matters. So the first thing it does come with your user's manual, the magazine and the firearm itself. Now it also comes with a number of BBs, I believe around 200, pretty straightforward. So you can see here with the magazine, this does leverage a 12 gram CO2 cartridge. These are very readily available, extremely cheap. I bought a huge box of them, very, very simple. Getting it inside, you can see it slips down and you do use this Allen wrench to put the cover on the back side of the magazine. And if you don't tighten down carefully enough, you will see later on, I definitely did not seat this as well as I should have. But again, moving forward and learning my lessons as we go, loading in the BBs. Now here's the second mistake I made. I loaded this thing to the max. I thought I could fit around 18 rounds in here. This is specifically a 12 round magazine. So do not overload it. The spring pressure will be incorrect for this particular firearm. But you can see here, getting them in place, they do stagger. It's kind of an interesting design, very similar to what my rounds do in my double stack in my P365 9 millimeter. So getting this ready and into good action, you can see this actually fits perfectly in my holster. Let's get outside to the range. All right, so rack the slide, let's see what happens here. Nothing. Nothing. All right. So what is the reason? Could be this is not seated in completely. So let's test the cartridge and see what happens there. So that did not pierce. So you can see there, I must not have put this in far enough. So we'll try again, getting that down. Seemingly sitting where it needs to now. Three of my shots came out of this, uh, but not under pressure. So they just fell on the ground. So I don't have a full magazine here. It might've just been two actually. I think I have 16 rounds in here. Actually, I gotta take a look. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. No, I have 13 and it started with 18. So five rounds literally just fell on the ground. Okay, so now it says go snug and then a quarter turn and we'll hear a hiss. Oh, there it is. All right. 
So that was it. Just was not pressurized. So that should be good to go. These things are literally just falling out the front of this. I don't understand. So now we're down to two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. I feel like maybe this isn't gonna be happy with a full magazine. There we go. There we go. So there's 11 shots. Let's check out the results. Not great on the score, but it doesn't need to be. Just trying to get things working for now, so that's a great place to start. At least this is working. Did not go. Let's try that again, see what happens. Uh-oh, jam. Okay, let's see what happens. So I'm out here shooting with my son, not exactly going to put him on film here just yet, but my tick marks are going to the right, his tick marks are going to the left, and you can see here adding up. So pretty good, I mean, on paper anyway, this catch is actually doing a nice job. It's catching all the BBs, so that's working out well, and at least we're hitting the target. A couple of jams with that gun so far, I'll keep an eye on it and see if it's problematic, but could just be the nature of the beast. So it sounded like they all hit one, two, three, four, five, six, flyer there, seven, eight, I don't know, might be a couple more, but that so far is the best I've done right there. One, two, three, four, five, kind of all together. That sixth one started to peel away, but that's pretty good. And the gun was reasonably reliable and has been. So we're f through a bunch of shots at this point, and the CO2 seems to be still going strong. Okay. So that's fired. This should not fire. And it doesn't. Rack it, and we're on. Two misfires. Let's see what we got here. Still BBs in here. What's going on? Uh oh. I don't know where these BBs go. Did you see one fall out the front, Ben? 
didn't, right? I don't think so. I don't know. I'm out. Oh, it just came out. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Oh, man. Nothing in it. So. All right. See it. This target's getting kind of full. That time I shot two eyes open to see how I do. One, two, three, four. Oh man. Five. I don't know. This thing's getting full, but so far the gun's still shooting. Uh, I mean, we've gone through a ton of rounds and the CO2 still seems fine, so I'm gonna keep pushing it a little bit longer, see how we do. So where this is not flowing back quite as much. Eh, eh, it seems like it's still okay. So, I mean, we're rolling into about a hundred rounds on the original CO2 and so far, so good. over this way because if that ricochets it's going that direction yeah yep So at this point we've shot 140 rounds with the original cylinder. Now I believe at this point it's definitely running out of gas. There are a lot of malfunctions and it's not really running quite as smooth. So I'm going to give this a shot, see if I can get through all 10 rounds with this cylinder. And if not, then this is spent. So this was a really good test. 140 rounds with one cylinder. 130 I would say were reliable, 10 started to malfunction. But let's test these real quick. Yeah, it's not even accurate anymore. Not enough to blow back. And every round, you literally have to rack it. It's barely even. There's like no... <laughs> yeah, so... That's it. So I would call this 130 rounds reliable, 10 rounds unreliable. You're not gonna make it past 140 rounds. And at that, the last 10 were pretty lame. But 130 solid rounds, one canister, that's sweet. So there you have it, a look at the SIG P365 BB. 0.177, 4.5 millimeters, awesome. Now, a few things, great, overall experience very fun very enjoyable not just for me also my son in the backyard reasonably safe the only thing that i feel might not be safe would be my property for example ricochets things this might bounce off of 
I don't think they're going to bounce far enough to cause any problems for anybody else's properties. Really just my own, you know, smashing my windows or any of the stupid stuff that could come with that. And maybe even ricochets back at us. Now, I did use the blanket. There was a moving blanket in the back. That actually worked phenomenally well. So I did have kind of more of a wood board behind my target at first. Bad idea. Don't use wood. Not a good idea. The blanket was literally perfect where it was able to absorb the actual sort of momentum and the power behind the BBs. Not incredibly powerful and not enough to pierce the blanket, but enough that it left a little bit of a dent, but it would definitely stop it from ricocheting. The BB trap was awesome. It worked its job. It was absolutely perfect. But the only thing to consider, the edges of it are metal. So if you have a missed shot and you hit that hard edge, it can definitely send a ricochet flying. And so now, other than that, yes, some malfunctions, not a big deal. I was able to work through it. I'm impressed at the total volume of shots that came out of this. So at this point, let's get this cylinder out of here. Let's see what happens. Hopefully no problems getting on this here. I, I don't know if I need to like relieve the pressure off of this or what. This is gonna be a bad experiment. I don't like where this is going, but let's see what happens. Okay, cracking that, all right. So I feel better about that already. So you can see just cracking that, backing it off, relieving the pressure, and there you go. So definitely simple. Now, as I mentioned, huge number of rounds through this. The other thing is, after all those rounds, I lost about 30 of my BBs, but I caught like 110 of them. So those 110 BBs now go back into the rotation. So overall, this is extremely cheap. And so based upon my calculations, what I paid for the actual CO2 cartridges and then per BB, literally per round, it's like 0.7 cents per shot. It is so cheap, it's crazy. And that's if you lose your BBs, if you keep your BBs, it'll be cheaper than that. So at less than one cent per shot, you can have a lot of fun for super short money. I spent $1.30 for this round of shooting today and I put 130, 140 rounds through my gun. So really, really cool, the ability to do this. And that's gonna help me with my sight picture. It's gonna help me with my trigger pull. It's gonna help me with my mechanics. It's gonna help me with just all the little things that come with shooting, being able to do it for that cheap, that consistently, and with the same firearm, as mine, definitely cool. Now Sig does claim this is like authentic weight. Let's test it real quick. So here, uh, this isn't gonna be perfect, but 13.0 ounces. And then here, let's see. So this is clear. The mag's a little shorter, but then it's got the whole grip. One pound, 3.2 ounces. So, I mean, not terribly far off. Um, I don't know, quarter of a pound, roughly ballpark different, not a lot. Um, but you know, you, you can feel it. I mean, this is definitely still cool to simulate, but at the same time, it's, it's definitely not going to be the same. Uh, people say it is, it's really not. And especially once you load this with nine millimeter rounds, it's going to feel different, but at the same time, you know, you have the overall same geometry, which is awesome. So geometry pretty much exactly the same that's awesome that works out well for your mag release that's just helpful your trigger pull let's get an idea on the trigger pull so um as we rack this getting a feel for that here's what we're gonna do getting on it with the gauge here and pulling this back we're gonna go pretty much right down where your pad would pull and straight back all right, so that looks like just a little over four pounds there. I believe that's going to be, let's do it one more time. Pulling straight back. There you go. So yeah, I have just a little over four pounds. It was on like four and one eighth pounds. Double checking, clear. Physically check, clear. Okay, so let's do this. Pulling straight back. There you go. So trigger pull on this. Five and three quarter pounds. Let's try it again. Pulling back. There it is. 
That time I had six and a quarter pounds. So obviously the trigger pull on the real version, that's gonna be a little bit stiffer than on the BB. But again, still fairly realistic overall. Now what about holsters? That's another place where this is gonna be awesome. So here you can see my 365 going in easy. Here you go, no problem, that's fantastic. Kydex, nice click, the BB, no problem, literally identical. And so all in all, again, very similar, not perfect, but the idea being now I can shoot in my backyard regularly, very cheap, very, very simple. And not only that, get this into my kids' hands, allow them to try. My youngest son is doing fantastic, almost better than me. And that's a great place to start. So it's safe. You can practice good finger discipline. You can practice your sight picture. You can practice your grip. You can practice all the important things that come from safety, awareness, general understanding, general mechanics. You know, I had him racking the slide, using the slide release, that's awesome. Things that I would not be comfortable with him doing with a live round in this nine millimeter. So from that perspective, this is absolutely amazing. And so with that, much, much more to come on the BB side of things. So again, the SIG P365, 0.177, 4.5 millimeter, awesome. And so if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from shelter systems, sleep systems, knives, axes, backpacks, flashlights, you name it. That's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.